Hey guys, welcome to The Drop. I'm Neha and today with me I've got Umar and Umar who both work for an organization called Just The Jew. So guys, tell us about your organization. So Just The Jew is basically an idea and an initiative uh, to connect the underprivileged and the privilege of Pakistan. So uh, back in 2012 when it actually started, um, it was a group of some O-level students who decided that they wanted to address the basic human need for food. Right, so they started off by collecting money from some wealthy family members and relatives and then using that money to buy sets of months ration and distribute that among 20 to 40 families in Lahore. That was back in 2012 and today, um, this year, Justuju actually helped raise uh, more than 10 million in funds and we helped 2,500 families in Balochistan uh, in an area which actually neighbors Afghanistan and we also uh, set up Ramadan Dastar Khan at, in Lahore every day where 600 to 800 people came to fast with us every day. And when I talk about connecting the privileged with the underprivileged, I actually mean uh, connecting those underprivileged who are so far and so neglected from us that their call for help does not even reach us. So that is just to, just to do, that is connecting the underprivileged with the privileged of Pakistan. Right. And how long have you, each of you been working for this organization? So we have been, uh, we were one of the co-founders, obviously, basically uh, to add just to add on to what Umar was saying. So in 2014, when the reserve bears started, that's, that was the time we realized that we want to, we need to go to the remote and tribal areas of Pakistan. Those are our people who are neglected, who need our help. And that's the time that when a group of students from Kurds uh, backgrounds, classes, so we came together to have this to form this initiative then we went to the tribal areas and from from 2014 to 2019 we are constantly we the whole team who started this are all together and we're working for the one cause we want to make we want to promote we want to have an awareness for, to our people about the remote and tribal areas and what difficulties have you faced in reaching a, a part of a population that as you said has been so difficult to reach or that is so underprivileged uh, what difficulties did you face? In All right, so the major difficulty that we faced was that uh, the houses or the homes that are there, they are very far apart. So in order to, you know, identify the families on, or in order to reach out to those families, it was very difficult for us to identify, first of all, to identify those families because uh, they were very far away. The terrain, the climate there is very tough. Uh, the people, they do not understand our language. They speak other languages, they speak Pashto or Blochi or whatever their local language is. So we, we need to take in account their local local authorities as well. And then the major reason, we, we do give out food supplies as well, but we also sit down with them. We also tell them that there's more to life, there's more to Pakistan and they're part of Pakistan. That's our major aim, that we want to tell them that you are part of us and that you are part of Pakistan. And when we, we the class, we the corporate class, are there to help you out in any way possible. And what has the reaction been from local authorities or those people that you've reached out to? So, um, you know, firstly, of course, uh, given that we come from Punjab, uh, you know, if I just talk about Balochistan, there's a notion over there that they do not believe in a country, right? They believe in tribes. So firstly, it's very important to actually build that narrative that this is Pakistan, right? We are coming from a privileged background, but we're here for you, right? Yes, we are blessed, Alhamdulillah, we have those blessings, but it is also our duty to actually help you. And so initially we have that sort of a reaction. There is a repulsiveness, but once they realize that they're actually, we're actually there to help them, then they give this sort of an emotion that makes us do more for these guys. Right. And uh, your organization has been very active on social media with its marketing campaigns and raising donations and stuff. What are your major objectives there? What do you plan to achieve? So uh, firstly, you know, back in 2012, as I told you, when we started, we were actually against marketing because uh, we believe and we still believe that the best charity is that which is done in secret. But uh, with that approach, in the first two years, we realized that we had reached a level of growth that had becoming uh, that was becoming stagnant. Right. And the donor circle was not increasing as well. But uh, once we realized that we actually wanted to create a larger impact, we wanted to reach out to more families 
we took this initiative to actually come on social media. And when we created a Facebook page, and this year we created an Instagram page as well. Uh, sorry, the last year we created an Instagram page. We realized that the growth has been exponential. There are so many people who have reached out to us, people we do not know, and they have given us amounts that we cannot think of even receiving, right? And other than that, we have had international donors who wanted to donate to us, who wanted to donate to the cause. Because we, through social media, actually, we try to create this sort of an awareness. So uh, when I talk about Balochistan, the area that we, had, we went to this year, uh, Zob district, uh, I was actually looking at the stats over there and we realized that 74% uh, children under five are malnourished, with many of them at a risk of severe malnutrition and stunted growth. Then 84% uh, I believe are uh, you know, under the poverty line, which is rupees 3000 per month. The poverty index over there is 60%, um, which means how below you are from the poverty line. So the 1500, so they're actually earning below 1500 over there. So these are the stats that we use to actually market the area that we're going to. And then when the people know the area and the people, uh, you know, we just to do is going, going to, uh, they, you know, pitch in more, you know, they, they, because the people that we're going to actually deserve our help the most. Exactly. And that's what we're trying to market over here. And in terms of international donors, where, which countries do you find that people People are very helpful, you know, very eager to help you. From our circle, we have been collecting international donations from most of our circles. Like, uh, we have 11 countries that have their donations last year. So, uh, other than the international dono donations, I believe that the local donations have been immense. Like, the philanthropy that is done in Pakistan and the donation that the amount of donations that are given locally by the people, they are uh, immense. Once you get into this field and once you go out to ask the people, you only realize how helpful the people are. So they just need an organization they want to trust. So in our society, there's this general idea that the youth or the millennials are spoiled or entitled. Do you think that is true or are they more interested in social welfare work? Um, you know, when you see social media today, uh, there is this narrative of actually pointing fingers at people, right? There is, yes, I agree, there, is, there are a lot of negatives in Pakistan. There are a lot of negatives in the community. You can see that on social media as well. So. Yes, uh, the, you know, the millennials are, you know, there is this narrative of actually pointing fingers at you. For example, if I point a finger at you that this is wrong with you and this, you know, these are the wrongs that you have. But I have to realize that there are three fingers pointing at myself as well. And in order to actually create an impact, I should start doing, right? And just to add on to what Omar was saying, uh, when we started our NGO in Black in 2014, we had around 20, 30 volunteers. Now in 2019, we have a team of more than 300 plus volunteers. So it's not that uh, there are so many people who just only talk about the negatives about Pakistan. There are people who want to volunteer. There are people who want to come and work for the other people, who want to selflessly devote themselves for other people. So I believe they just need a platform. And I think uh, despite all the negativities that people talk about Pakistan, there are a lot of positivities about the Pakistan and the youth. And we need to concentrate on Certainly. that. Certainly. And on that positive note, that's all we've got for today. You were watching The Drop. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.